which I don't like, MAC Dazzle Glasses. They're really, really, really shiny, it's true. The reason I don't like these is because they're way too sticky, unbearably sticky. Um, the second thing is MAC Foundation. I tried Studio Fix Fluid and number one, the colours are all atrocious if you're pale. They look horrible, hideous and also it broke me out almost instantly. I just put it on and then a few, I wasn't allergic I don't think but it's stodgy, gross and gives me nightmares thinking about it. So that's a definite overhype because I know some people swear by it which baffles me. Go for Estee Lauder double wear that's what I say. The MAC 239 which I do own and the MAC 217 which I've given away the MAC 217 is the blending brush. It's got a really good shape head, but it's so scratchy and it got to the point where it was really, really irritating my eyes. The reason I don't like this, I, I wouldn't give it away, it's not quite bad, but it's really overhyped. There's loads of other brushes which are quite good as well. It does really pack on colour, but I think this is more suited to a thin eyelid than um, a big hooded eye. Next thing which I think is overhyped are MAC blushes. This one's a frost but I've tried the mattes and um, the sheer tone shimmer and various other guises and I just think they don't last very long on your skin so I'm not that impressed with them. I think you can get drugstore ones which work just as well like Barium actually lasts longer on my cheeks than this stuff. So also I don't really appreciate that they're so flimsy, this keeps popping out if you give it any abuse whatsoever and also no mirror, so not great to carry around with you. Next thing which I think is overhyped is drugstore mascaras. Um, L'Oreal Voluminous which smudged really badly on me. Then there was the Colossal which was quite good but it really stank with potpourri so I hate scented stuff, like even girl ass stuff, some of it's too scented and Illa Masca, I don't like scent. There was Rimmel Sexy Curls Mascara which has got a lot of hype and I thought that brush was really flimsy, bendy, hated it, so all of those just not good. And I think it's smudged a bit as well. And Lash Blast left my eyelashes really crunchy and hard and brittle. I picked up a Pop Rouge because I've heard a lot about them on Makeup Alley. And this one's called Cabo Coral. Really nice, looks really good on lips. Put some on. Looks really good on lips and it can also go on cheeks. And a little bit goes a long way. And as soon as I tried it, I was really excited because even though I was worried it might break me out, I just thought. It's such a wonderful colour and you don't need much and it's £16 which I don't think is that much for something that will last this long but the downside is it really doesn't last long at all. I'll put this on and then 10 minutes later literally it will be really faded and it won't last half a day let alone a whole day. The first time I heard about it was from Goss Makeup Artist and it's the Scott Barnes um, About Face book. And he said it was great, and then I heard Eleni Triple O Seven say it was great and it looked good. I read it. I felt like once you'd read one of the makeovers, you've read them all. If I didn't have Goss makeup artist who'd already taught us so many of the tricks, I think maybe it would have been more valuable. There was a lot of contouring, so that's what he's famous for. There was a lot of going on about uh, Jennifer Lopez and uh, completely brushed under the carpet any of the arguments they'd had and whatever and it was all a bit sickly sweet, all the models had uh, causes but when you read their interviews, which I actually read it cover to cover it was all a bit um, shallow and literally the only tricks which I learned were if you're red haired, which I'm not anyway but if you're red haired to put gold in your eyebrows, not red, because red hair is just a lot of gold, apparently. And also um, some different ways of 
doing very natural makeup. Like it wasn't a very good read. Um, the only plus side was that he didn't really push his products, so that was commendable, but I just didn't feel there was that much substance and teaching in there. Maybe because I've been really over looking forward to it, but I think it was overhyped for what it was. And I'm going to try really hard to get this L'Oreal book which has come out, which is all about um, the history of makeup and beauty through the ages and that kind of thing. And that seems much more like a history of art book almost, which is going to be a really intellectual read. So I'm looking forward to a real in-depth read and that was a very shallow kind of read. And all in all, the only thing I really took from it was that all the interviews, the models were saying, I go to the gym four times a week and it's just inspired me to go to the gym four times a week. So I don't think that was the real uh, hope for the book. I'm upset to put it in my overhyped list, but in it goes. The next thing is something I've spoken about as well, but since passed it off to someone else, it's Benefit Coralista. And I didn't like that because it was a bit more shimmery than anticipated, but mainly because I couldn't abide the smell. It's Benefit Erase Paste, and this one's in Fair, number one. And it looks like that. I haven't used it that much. I just bought Laura Mercier's Secret Concealer, which I'm hoping will be a good version of this. But this is cakey, pasty. I mean, it does call itself a paste, so... There is that warning, but I didn't realise how pasty it was. It is like wiping a paste under your eyes. You get instant wrinkles because it creases. It doesn't even cover that well. It's not good as face concealer because it's got a kind of shine to it. So I hate this stuff. I think it's rubbish. It was sent to me to review over on my blog. And I feel a bit guilty, but anyway, I never mentioned it on my blog. But this is Bare Essentials and it's their foundation, which is really popular. It's kind of ubiquitous. My shade is fairly light. Now they've changed the packaging so it's a lot neater. It's got an internal sifter. So that's good news. But um, I just felt like I had to really load this on to get any kind of coverage because I like the Dita Von Tees full maximum coverage look. I don't like being too natural and having, you know, anything showing through. So even though I didn't have most of the products, I hope that helped some people. This is a really healthy tag because it discourages shopping. So that's hard to find on YouTube. So please embrace it and post any comments or any responses below. Thanks for watching and thanks for the tag. All the best. Bye.